So let's go ahead and go back over to our Solution Explorer. And I'm going to go up into the World folder here and I'm going to create a new folder uh, by right clicking on the World folder. And I will say, just call this NPCs. And then I am going to right click on that folder and add a new class. And I shall call this class NPC. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we are there. Oh, what to do, what to do. Let's see. Um, temporarily, I am going to be using an entity model uh, as an enumerated type, but I will probably change this in the near future um, for the sake of loading, uh, loading these entity models from our map file because I want to actually embed all of my entities in the map file. But for now, I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm going to say public entity model. You can call it NPC model if you want. As model. OK. The question is, what is the model? Actually, you know what? I think I used the model before for something because that should not have come up. I'm going to say public enum npc model. How about that? And I'm going to add a few different types here. I'm going to say none is the default. I'm going to say merchant princess. Uh, female one and Marvin. Okay, so we're gonna call this as we're gonna say entity model as NPC model. We don't end up with any weird conflicts later on. Um, let's see. Next step. I wonder if I. I think it might be a good idea for future reference maybe to have um, some sort of tie to the map name. I don't know if that would actually be necessary though. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't add that. Um, so I'm going to do public s rect as rectangle equals new rectangle. This is going to be our source rectangle. Uh, for our character sprite and it's just we're gonna just set that to the first tile on that um, sprite sheet so the characters facing us you can use that as a you know a, a character sprite or something uh, face or whatever um, let's say public any frame it's gonna be the animation frame for walking is just going to be an integer and um, let's see NPC coordinates so we're going to do public X as integer and that will be the X position on the world map um, this will actually be like the starting coordinates for the NPC because uh, the probably uh, be set to walk around. You can add a number of behaviors to your NPCs to have them do all sorts of different things, but this will essentially be their starting location. And then if they wander from there, that's up to you. So as integer. Um, much like our character's movement in the world map, we need an offset value uh, to track the small movements across the map. So. Uh, we're going to do a public offset x as an integer, public offset y as an integer. Again, that's for motion tracking. Um, let's see. 
Next up, we want to know is the character is a the character is the NPC moving or not. So we're going to say public uh, is moving as a boolean value, and I'm going to set that to false by default. <coughs> Next up, uh, again, these are all going to be like our uh, characters' movement routines and direction positioning and whatnot. So we're going to do uh, last direction as an integer. Let's set that to 1. That could also be a short or single value, whatever you uh, choose to use in yours is fine. Um, those are never going to go very high, so move direction as integer, again set that to 1, default move position uh, 1 I think I will have set to down, so it's by default your the NPCs will be facing you and then that will move around from there. Public um, movement speed, probably also important as integer. And it's kind of fun uh, later on to actually randomize some of these values so you know they start in other places or um, you know start some NPCs move faster than others you know maybe you have a little old man and he moves really slow or you know little kids that run around fast all sorts of stuff. Um, Uh, if you want to name your NPCs, uh, you can do that with this. You can say name as string. Uh, it's up to you. Not really necessary. One thing that is very important for an NPC is the ability to talk. So uh, we're going to have a dialogue as a string value. And we will eventually return that uh, to a dialogue window. And you probably create some sort of dialogue handler. In this video, I'll probably just be using something like a, I don't know, probably uh, just a message box or something, just to just to prove that the dialogue is accessible to the character. So, um, and we're going to need a couple of timers. So we're going to say timers. I'm going to do uh, public. TMR for timer, one for um, timer move as integer, and one is going to be controlling how frequently the, the, they move, and the other one is going to control, I, I think the Let's see, there's the movement speed and the movement frequency, I think, is what we're going to be doing here. Uh, sorry, my brain just kind of went blank there. Eh, and it doesn't matter. I mean, these could be public or private. It doesn't, I'm not going to make a, a difference. I'll probably only need to be accessible by the internal NPC class. So, say move to as integer. So, frequency and speed. Is what we're going for here. Um, we're going to want to add some sort of randomizer as well. I think um, it's going to, you know, we're not going to want all of our NPCs moving at the exact same time, you know, on the same exact timer and, uh, you know, at the same frequency. So um, let's just create a little random here and say private. R&D as random. I think that'll be all of the variables that we need to oops, okay. I'm create that as a new random. Uh, that should be all the variables that we need for our NPC.